Hello, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. In a recent video, I demonstrated some of the On One Photo Effects tools, and during the course of that, I was using quite a lot of masks. I've had a few emails since asking me, how do all these masking tools work? How do I know how to use them so easily? And I'm going to try and answer that question in today's video. So I'm in Photoshop, I've got my image open, and down here in the Layers window you can see I've created a new layer, I've called it On One, and I've converted that for use with Smart Filters because On One Photo Raw supports the use of Smart Filters. I'm now going to open the filter, and I'm going to use the On One Effects 2018. And here we are in On One Photo Effects, and I'm starting without any filters applied. First thing I'm going to do is add a new filter, and I'm going to start with a dynamic contrast filter. The idea I want to use here is to boost the contrast and detail on the bandstand, but not on the sky. At the moment, you can see that I'm increasing quite a lot of contrast adjustment. You can see this coming in here around the, the wet tiles on the floor, but I'm also affecting the sky, and I don't want to do that. I want to create a, a, uh, a mask that can separate the sky from the bandstand. And this is where the masking actually happens. You've got this icon here where you can actually show or hide the mask. And by default, you've got this white mask. Now, white means that the effect from the layer is actually being applied to that area of the image. And because the entire mask is white, it means that the effect is being applied to everything. So what we want to do is somehow cut out the bandstand from the background. And there's several tools we can use to actually do this. One of the easy ways we can do it is actually to paint out the area of the sky. Now at the moment, I've got paintbrush tool, which is selected. And that's because I'm now clicked to work on the mask. And I can set that to be paint out. I'm going to reduce the size because actually it's quite big at the moment. And I'm going to reduce the feather on that as well because it's actually quite a, a, a soft brush. And I'm going to set the opacity back up to 100. Now there's a useful option here which is this perfect brush which actually will detect the area you're selecting and it will select other common areas as well. So I'll show you how this works. I can simply paint on the sky around the bandstand to select it. Now as I'm painting, you should be able to see the mask here building up. And then if I go into the area in the center here, between the bandstands, I'm selecting that. Now we can view the mask that we've created by just using this view button here. And you can see that's not actually that perfect after all. It's a pretty good start, but you can improve it by actually painting over again some of these areas. Now as I'm painting there, I'm not changing the size of the brush, so I can actually do that using the bracket tools, sorry, the bracket keys, just as you would in Photoshop or Lightroom. Okay, so I've got most of the area now painted. Some areas of black are appearing on the mask here and down here where I don't want them to. So I can actually paint those back in now on the mask. Now because I've got this perfect brush selected, it's quite difficult. If I turn that off, it paints in very easily, but you end up taking out the sky there. So I can either undo that, or I could have uh, painted a little bit more carefully again using the perfect brush. But that's making a reasonable job of selecting the mask so that we've separated out the bandstand from the sky. If we want to go back to viewing the image, we just click on the view button again. And now we've got the bandstand selected here and here, and that's being adjusted with the dynamic contrast, but the sky isn't. So you can turn this off to show you, and that's made a substantial difference. 
So that's one way of creating a mask, but there's much more powerful tools actually in here as well. So let's reset the mask and I'll show you a different way of actually doing that. So this time we're going to create a luminosity mask. There's a button here called Lumen. When I select that, it creates the luminosity mask and we can see that now by clicking view. And it just looks like a black and white version of the image, which is all the luminosity mask actually is. Now, there's a couple of sliders here to be aware of. We've got this feather slider, which when I move it, you can see it just blurs the mask. And that's quite good for doing things like blending together different adjustments. And we also have this density slider. Now, when I move this over to the left, watch what happens. The image gets lighter until it actually vanishes. So that will actually help you again control the mask and where things are being applied. But what we're actually going to use now is this levels adjustment. Now we can use the levels adjustment. If we move it to the right, what will happen is that the areas of black in the mask or the dark areas in the mask turn to complete pure black. And if we take the midtone slider here and move this over to the right, you can see that the other areas that are highlights in the mask are darkened. And if I take the white point slider and move that to the left, what you'll see is it knocks out the sky as well. So the sky has gone white, the bandstand's gone black, and we've created the basis of a luminosity mask. Now, one of the other adjustments we can use here is this window slider, and it's a bit like a, a tonal range selector. So if I move this over to the to the right, you can see all of a sudden it kicks in. Now, the reason that's come quite quickly is because of the way that I've got the uh, the levels pointers so close together. If I have them further apart, it doesn't kick in quite as fast. The other one I can move is the whites. So what's happening here is that the, the selection is being made between this tonal range here and we're then adjusting it further using this levels. And between those two, we can actually create quite a good adjustment. Now that's far from perfect at the moment, but now we can clean that up using our brush tools. So again, I'm going to paint in the mask and I'm going to use that with the perfect brush. And I'm going to increase the size. And all I'm doing now is painting in the effect onto the sky. Now, if you'll notice that I'm doing this the opposite way to with the to the to the brush we used earlier, and that's simply the way that the mask has been created. Now, once I've finished that, I can now paint out the other areas down here. Now, at the moment, I've got the perfect brush enabled. I'm going to actually disable that because it's easier to paint with. I just have to be quite careful as I get near to the edges. As I've just made a mistake there. So I'm going to undo that and we'll just paint again. And I've made a mistake again because I'm painting with a mouse here and I'm painting with quite a, a large brush. If I reduce the brush down, it just makes it easier to paint with. And I can also paint out these areas here and up here. Now, when you get to working on the smaller areas, it's useful to zoom in and now we can reduce the brush size further and just paint out those areas quite easily. Now again, if we wanted to, we could go smaller and select the 
perfect brush as well. And that's quite useful for just cleaning up these edges. So we can paint in the, the areas here, just painting along with the perfect brush until we get the mask adjustment that we want. Now I'm not taking a great deal of care or effort over this, but you get the idea. Now once we've got to the point where we're reasonably happy with that, we can adjust the feather if we want to, and that will tend to cover over some of these white areas. Now for the adjustment that I'm using, using a feather isn't a problem. We can now return to viewing the adjustment. Now at the moment, the dynamic contrast isn't being applied to everything correctly. What we want to do is invert it. And now it's being applied to the bandstand as we'd want it. Now the other thing we can do with that, now we've got a, a good mask, is we can copy it. And we can add other filters. So let's now go to a tone enhancer. Again, we'll now create our mask. So we'll paste that in. And I'm going to invert it back so that now I'm affecting the sky rather than the rest of the image. So there we can adjust the exposure and contrast and we can darken the sky slightly. I can also use this compression slider here and I'm going to increase the clarity in the sky as well. So I've got two completely different adjustments. One on the bandstand, which you can see at the moment, and then I've got the sky as well. And then finally, I can add another adjustment for a special effect. So let's say, for example, I want to go to black and white, and we can see now the black and white adjustment on the image. And to finish off with, we can add a vignette and I'm going to add quite a strong vignette to the image. And that really darkens down the sky now. And what I want to do though is it's affecting the bandstand here. So if I turn that off you'll see and I want to stop it affecting the bandstand. So again, I can return to my mask. I can paste in my mask and I'll just invert that now. So we're now affecting the sky, but not the bandstand. I want to extend the vignette though into this lower area of the image. So the way I can do that now is to actually select my mask and paint over it. So again, I'm going to use the paint in I'm going to turn off the perfect brush. I'm going to lower the opacity so that I need to do a number of brush strokes. And I'm also going to soften up the edge of the brush quite considerably. And we also need to just make that quite a bit larger. So we're going to be painting with a large soft edge brush to low opacity. So we make multiple brush strokes. And now I can just paint over the areas where I want the effect to actually be shown. And that makes for a nicer effect. So there we have the vignette off, vignette back on. It's not affecting the bandstand, but it is down here where I want it to. I'm now happy with my image and I can click the done button to return back to Photoshop. Back in Photoshop now and you can see the finished image. That was the starting image. Finished image is quite more dramatic and has much more impact and a lot of that was only possible because we could work with the great luminosity masking features in on one. I hope you found that interesting. I'm Robin Worley. You've been watching Lenscraft. Don't forget to share this video and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next session.